Over the past 20 years, electricity prices in the U.S. have nearly doubled. Did you feel it? Did you notice your bill go up and rates continue to rise without any way to stop them? I have. And of course, this is compounded by switching more things over to electric. In fact, in California, it's illegal now to build a new home with natural gas, so everything has to be electric. And for me, my energy use has actually more than doubled over the recent years because I now have just two electric cars and no gas cars. But the good news is I found a solution. I found a hack, a way to kind of game the system and pay nearly nothing for electricity, plus protect my family from blackouts and escape the tyranny of the electric company. And today I'm going to share that with you. Here's how it works. At my house, I have solar panels that cover nearly all of my energy needs with the exception of my electric cars. And then I have two Tesla Powerwalls. These are home batteries. The Powerwalls are really the key to this whole thing, by the way. Now, in my area in Southern California, we have a thing called time of use pricing, which means that during the busiest times of the day, the utility company will charge more for that energy. It's kind of like surge pricing in Uber, if you want a point of reference, if you've never heard of it before. And they do this because it costs them more to provide electricity during those times when demand is high. So basic supply and demand economics here, nothing surprising. But like any system, this TOU pricing model has a flaw, something I didn't expect and something that we can exploit to our advantage, a, a hack, if you will. And that brings me to today's sponsor, Raycon. I've been a fan of Raycon for a long time now. I've been using these everyday earbuds for well over a year when I'm on the plane and I'm listening to stuff, even when I'm editing footage, but mostly I like to use them when I'm working out. I can be on the rowing machine or lifting weights or doing anything I want and they do not slip out. I've tried a lot of other earbuds out there and these ones by far provide the best quality, the most consistent performance, and they stay in my ear when I'm lifting weights. And the case that they come in is a charging case that gives you up to 32 hours of battery life, along with this Bluetooth pairing that makes it just really easy. As soon as you open them up and pop them in, you're good to go. Raycon has a 45 day free return policy and they retail for about half the price of other premium audio brands, but they sound just as good. So if you wanna check these out, Raycon is gonna hook you up with an exclusive deal of up to 20% off your Raycon order. Go to buyraycon.com slash Ben Sullins or click the link in the description below. And thanks Raycon for sponsoring today's episode. So with our setup, that includes our own energy generation from solar, our own energy storage in the power wall and the time of use pricing. I chose a plan that gives me the cheapest nighttime rates as possible. For me, that is around nine cents per kilowatt hour from 12 a.m. to 6 a.m., which is dirt cheap out here in California. And then during that peak hours of four to 9 p.m., when everyone gets home and starts using the most energy, it's 53 cents per kilowatt hour. That's an almost 600% increase. And this leads to the hack, which is really just pretty simple. It's not that crazy of a thing to pull off and you can do it too. I'll explain later on how. My power walls can be configured in various ways in terms of how and when I am able to use them. So during this peak time at 4 p.m. every day, my entire house switches to 100% running on the power walls. And with two power walls, even during a hot day with all the appliances and air conditioning running, they can handle it no problem. It's essentially like I'm just going off grid during the most expensive time of the day, which means I don't have to pay that 53 cents an hour kilowatt rate. We're also still generating solar at this time. So every watt that we send back to the grid during these peak hours, we get credit for at that peak rate. This is due to our state's net energy metering policy. In California, like many other states, when I send energy back to the grid, the utility company gives me a credit for that. And it's at the same rate as if I had bought it during that period of time. Don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to do that as I mentioned, but first let's free the data. Okay, so at my house, I've been running this way for over two years now with my power walls and solar panel setup and the TOU pricing. Now, if you look at the last 12 months, we can see that my average monthly bill was around $34 or just about a dollar per day, which includes my entire house with my family at home all day, every day, plus fuel for our two cars. So if you were comparing this to what you pay, take your total electric bill, plus however much you spent on gas for as many cars as you have, then divide that by 30 to get a daily rate comparable to what I have here. Looking at all 12 months total, our cost was $417, in which we paid for 13,000 kilowatt hours of energy. 
or about double what the normal house in the US uses. Again, because we have two electric vehicles that eat a ton of energy. So when you divide those two numbers, it turns out that we pay only three cents per kilowatt hour. This is over 300% cheaper than the US average of 10 cents and 10X or 1000% cheaper than what my neighbors are paying with an average of 31 cents where I live. Okay, but what does this mean really? Let's tie it back to the car, since we all get the pain of filling up each week or every other week. If you're like most people, you drive around 12,000 miles per year and have a car with around 30 miles per gallon. Let's take that 12,000 miles per year and the 30 miles per gallon with an average gas price of $3, I guess. <laughs> with that rate, you're spending about $92 per month on gas or about nine cents per mile. In comparison, when I'm paying three cents per kilowatt hour and I'm getting three miles per kilowatt, that means I'm paying one cent per mile, which would make my monthly bill about $10 per month compared to the 92. And again, we're using a $3 average gas price, which, you know, who knows how that's gonna go. But it's a lot cheaper in the end is what I'm trying to say. Now, being a clever observer, I'm sure that you know, and I'm typing in the comments there, that the solar panels and the power walls aren't free. You have to factor that in. Yes. Let's do that right now. Let's let's extrapolate that out. And you know what they say about people. There are two types. There are the people in the world that can extrapolate from incomplete data. And okay, so let's go back to how much we're paying here and compare that to how much it would cost if we pay the same as my neighbor. We consumed 13,324 kilowatt hours over the past 12 months, and that cost us $417. So there's our three cents per kilowatt hour. Now, if we paid an average of 31 cents, like my neighbor did, we'd be looking at $4,130, which means we saved $3,713 in the past 12 months. Pretty good. But the solar panels and power walls aren't free. As I mentioned, in fact, they cost around $28,000. Now that's after tax credits. So if we take a $3,700 a year savings and multiply that by the minimum warranty here of 10 years, we'd be saving around $37,000. And we subtract the cost of the system, we find that total we're making out about $9,000 ahead. Now for me, $9,000 is a lot of money. So I'm pumped about this. But of course, the panels and the power walls can last a lot longer. The 10 years is just the minimum warranty. That's for the power wall system and for the inverter of our solar panel setup. So we'll end up saving a lot more than that. But just to be conservative, I wanted to stick with that number, which gives us a $9,000 savings across 10 years. Now that's pretty good results as far as I'm concerned. And while I think we can all agree that saving money is a good thing, the other side of this is that it is protecting my family against any evil the utility company may want to do. So if they wanna jack prices up or if they wanna turn our power off so they don't get sued from faulty equipment that causes a wildfire, whatever the case is, I am protected from all of that. And this is why I would recommend this kind of a setup to anyone that can viably do it within their budget. Now, where I live in Southern California, the weather is pretty nice all year round. I think the average temperature is around 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 degrees Celsius, but with climate change, we're seeing things get a lot hotter and a lot more dry, leading to wildfires and then power outages as a result. And on the wildfires, we also have a drought every seven years or so. It's kind of cyclical, but they do seem to be getting worse in terms of the severity of the drought. And then of course, when you get a heavy rain after something like a wildfire, it can trigger a landslide. And this is also a really devastating thing that we have to really consider out here in California. The question now is, what do you need to execute this hack yourself? Is this something that you can do? Well, let's walk through it. So the ingredients for our recipe here, just to refresh, are the time of use pricing model, the net energy metering policy, solar panels, and a power wall or other home battery. Now, if your primary goal is just to be free from the grid and live off-grid and independent, and I do love this reason, then you don't have to worry about the time of use pricing or the net energy metering. You can just buy your solar panels, set them up and get some sort of home battery, and then you're good to go. Essentially, those things will just naturally work to give you this kind of off-grid setup, but there will be a lot in terms of what your electrician has to do at your house. Okay, first up, time of use pricing. 
I couldn't find an easy way to search for this across the board, so there's not just like one website you can go to to figure it out. The best way that I was able to come up with is for you to go to your utility provider, whoever you buy electricity from now, and look at their rate plans. Somewhere here, you should see the words time of use or something about different rates for different times of the day. If you can't find it there, you might wanna try calling your utility provider and just asking them if they have time of use pricing plans. Now, the plan that I've found to work the best over the past two years for me is where you can get the absolute cheapest rates possible. Don't worry about how expensive the plan can be during peak hours because you're gonna be off grid during that time. Now, even if you don't have solar, you can still refill your home batteries with these lower rates. So you don't actually even need solar here, but it would be better to have it because then you can really kind of take advantage of that whole off-grid thing as well. Okay, next up, net energy metering. For this one, there is a good resource here with the NCSL website, and it shows a map of states with net energy metering policies. If you're not in one of the areas that you see here, you can of course call your local utility provider and figure out what's going on. Maybe it's on their website. And if not, you might wanna try contacting your local officials, whoever that is, that would govern such a thing in your state. So with these two ingredients here, which again are really kind of out of your control other than for lobbying it if you don't have them, let's look at the two things that you do have control over, the solar panels and the home battery. First up, solar. And really the question that I find interesting here is how much solar to get and how to get quotes for it. The main thing that I always recommend is that you maximize your solar as much as kind of feasible. So let's say you use 6,000 kilowatt hours per year, like the average home here in the US, then you'd only really need about four kilowatts of a solar system to meet almost all of your energy needs. To add some more detail here and to show you how it works, you can go to the Energy Sage website and you can punch in your address and your electricity bill and it'll tell you how big the system is and everything that you need. So here it's saying that I need a 4.8 kilowatt PV setup, that's my photovoltaic panels, which will cover 100% of my energy needs. Now I can pay cash and across 20 years, that'll save me about $58,000 or I can do a zero down loan and that'll save me about $52,000. Now, the net cost of this system is $11,000 if I were to pay cash or zero out of pocket if I were to get a loan. On the Tesla site, if I go over to solar panels and I choose order now, punch in my address, give them my electricity bill, you can see that they would recommend a 4.25 kilowatt solar panel setup and a power wall battery. Now this is coming out to $13,777. That's after the incentives. So if you get rid of that, you're looking at just under $20,000, which isn't bad. But something to know is that with only one power wall, the system itself won't likely be able to power your entire home, which means that you'll have to add a second power wall if you really want to execute the hack how I've done. Now, unfortunately, as of this recording, you're not able to order a Tesla Powerwall without also ordering solar. So if you did wanna execute this hack, you would have to go with Tesla, or we would have to look at batteries from other providers. I did a video looking at a bunch of other home batteries out there since Tesla stopped selling to people that also didn't buy solar. So I'll link to that in the description along with an Energy Sage article, which actually kind of goes through all of those in more detail. Now, when you submit your quote, if you do it through Energy Sage, you can request that. Say, hey, I want a home battery for X number of days or whatever, and they will build that in. So it's something you can request there to kind of compare apples to apples between Tesla and whomever else might be giving you a quote. And so with a home battery and solar and net energy metering and time of use pricing, you are ready to go here. The last step is to configure your Tesla Powerwall. And I'll just show you exactly how I do that on mine. This may change over time. They've seemed to be updating the app a lot more recently, but here's how I do it. And then if and when you get to this point, you can kind of execute that or you know, you'll, you'll get the idea of how to do it, even if the app looks different than what I'm showing you here right now. Okay, so first up, go into the Tesla app and go over to where your home energy gateway is. You'll see some kind of diagram here showing where the energy is coming from and going and all those kind of things. And then you can look at all the other details there. But the one you wanna go into is settings. 
In the settings, I have a backup reserve set of 20%. That means that only 80% is available for this sort of hack here. Then when you scroll down, you're gonna to wanna to choose time-based control. And this is the one that's going to allow you to control exactly when you go off grid and you use the battery, etc. Now I'll click edit custom rate plan here. And you can see in here that I have off peak and peak. Now where I live, we actually have three modes. We have off peak, peak, and super off peak. So in this terms, what I'm doing is I'm setting super off peak to what Tesla is calling off peak, which is 12 a.m. to 6 a.m. This is when things are the cheapest here. And notice I'm on weekdays. The peak is from four to 10 p.m. So what that means is that during those periods, during off peak, I'm gonna go back to the grid for everything. And then during peak, I'm gonna go to the battery for everything. And in between there, it's going to kind of balance and figure out what's going on. So if we have a ton of solar, it may fill up the battery with that. If it needs to fill up the battery because say a storm is coming, it may pull from the grid, et cetera. It, it tries to be smart in between those two time zones there, but the off peak and the peak are the ones you wanna set. Now on the weekends where I live, we have off peak that super cheap rate until 2 p.m. because the usage of electricity is different. So our TOU plan is different on the weekends. And then peak I have from 12 p.m. to 12 a.m., which means that I'm basically completely off grid from 2 p.m. to midnight on the weekends. I also have Stormwatch enabled, which will charge up the power walls in the event of a storm coming. It kind of reads the weather report and sees that, charges them fully to make sure that if a storm does knock out power or whatever, we're good to go. Then I've opted into this Tesla virtual power plant thing. It's a beta here in California. I want to be able to do this. I did a whole video on it. Again, I'll put it in the description just to explain what a virtual power plant is. But essentially, if and when approved in your area, like in California where I am, yeah, I could make money by letting the grid pull from my battery during a peak time when they need it. So it's actually a really cool way to do that. And then you can look here and you can kind of see the other priorities. There's vehicle to charging. There's a lot of different settings here, but the main thing is this time-based control, setting up your peak and off-peak times to match your time of use pricing schedule. I did mention that at your house, you're gonna to have to have some electrical stuff worked or maybe reworked if you haven't done so already in order to make this happen. That's because when you install a home battery, you're going to also need to have all of your circuits, all of the actual things that power your house, the sockets and everything else, running from a separate panel that's not connected to the main electric grid. So this is also known as a sub panel or an essential loads panel. If you are doing that, you might wanna consider getting a new smart panel. I got one from a company called Span. I did a video on it. I'll put a link in the description. There's lots of links in the description. You should check it out. But at that point, what you have is essentially a second panel where everything is connected and they pull from your actual batteries. So that way the grid can go down and your house doesn't, it doesn't matter at all. It doesn't even care what's going on. There's a gate way that Tesla makes for their power walls, which kind of controls where the energy is coming and going and all that. But these will add to the overall cost of the system. So the install, depending on your situation, could be a lot more than just these numbers that you've seen here or that Tesla or whomever else list on their website. But in the end, you get not only the ability to protect yourself against blackouts, to live free and independent of the grid and whatever else the utility companies want to try to force upon you, but you can also do this hack where you essentially buy low and sell high and pay next to nothing for electricity. As someone that uses a lot of electricity, I like this idea. And as we become more electrified in our transportation and our appliances and everything else, I think more and more people are gonna see a big benefit from this approach. So make sure to give this video a like if you enjoyed it, if you find it helpful, share it with someone you know possibly. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think. And thanks for watching. I'll see you guys back here in the next one.